And my name is Gary Marr. I'm with Sage Software, and I'm with the uh, analytics division that works specifically with our Sage Active Planner product. And we're here today to talk about gaining control of your budgeting process, which for uh, many companies, many organizations is, is well out of control. And Active Planner is a unique tool from Sage uh, that can help you uh, gain control of that process. Uh, Active Planner is unique unto itself in the fact that, that Sage has a product like this. Most uh, you know, software companies, uh, ERP software companies, only offer GL solutions and forget about the budgeting side. Uh, Sage is not one of those. We're one of, the, one of the only ones that offer a budgeting solution to complement our ERP offerings, uh, and that is Sage Active Planner. So we're going to talk all about that today. Um, Uh, basically, that's my information up there. I'm going to start with a real brief overview. We're going to talk a little bit about the product itself. We're going to spend some time in a demonstration, and hopefully at the end we'll have some time left for questions as well. I'll try to try to allow for that. Um, you know, if you want to type them in too, we can try and get them as we go along. But but I'll try and allow some time at the end uh, for questions. So um, forgive me if I go at a good pace. We've got a lot of good things to show you today. And so I want to make sure we, we get in as much of that as we can so you get a really good idea and understanding of how Active Planner can benefit you and what the strengths of the product are so you can make the best decision yourself, whether it's a good fit for your organization. So a little bit of background on Active Planner. It was originally developed back in the mid-90s, uh, so it is a well-established application. Uh, you know, it hasn't had many updates. We'll continue to have updates and enhancements, things such as that. We have customers worldwide. Uh, in fact, we have small shops up to small countries that do their budgeting on Sage Active Planner. So it actually scales up to small countries, but uh, it speaks to the product's flexibility there is the fact that we can you know, serve such a wide variety of organizations and entities and things like that. And that's one of the reasons Active Planner is very popular is that it's extremely flexible. Uh, one of the things you'll see that is within the software, we're in the, within the inherent capabilities of the software, is the ability to, to customize it according to your needs. So it's not a software product where we're going to come in and say, look, we, we're the budgeting experts, we know budgeting, and uh, if you can change your whole budgeting process to fit what we've predefined, then we can, we can automate it for you. Uh, actually, it's quite the opposite. What we know about budgeting is that everybody's budget's unique. Everybody's plan is unique. So we created Active Planner to be flexible enough and strong enough to automate the budgeting process you have in place. And that flexibility is one of the reasons it's very popular. Another key reason Active Planner is popular is the ability to hit all your data sources and bring all your data together and virtually eliminate rekeying and, and uploading and downloading of data into your budget. So we'll see how that, you know, that works as we go on, but, but that can be an immense time saver as far as uh, putting the budget together but saying if you've already got that out there, let Active Planner grab it for you and bring it into your budget environment. There are a lot of other reasons Active Planner is popular. Those are two of the main two, and those are ones that you'll probably hear me talk a little bit more about as, as we go through, uh, through the demonstration today. So why do we have a product such as Active Planner? We talked a little bit about this in budgeting. But why do we have a product such as Active Planner? Well, because Sage, as I said, Sage is unique in offering this, but, but Sage actually looks at this and realizes that budgeting is extremely important to organizations. It's extremely important to your health, your long-term viability, and to, to your competitiveness. Um, and everybody's got a planning and budgeting process. So it's a universal type of need. Every organization's got one. Now, some processes are more formal than others, some are more efficient than others, but every organization has a planning and budgeting process. Budgeting, though, has evolved. Uh, you know, when budgeting first came about on the scene, budgets used to be a means to control costs. We had, you know, X dollars with our organization. We wanted to make sure we didn't uh, spend more than that by the end of the year. So we put a budget together to say, here's the dollars we have, here's what we're going to spend, and then here's how we're not going to exceed that. Well, that was fairly simple, and that could be done fairly easily, but, but budgets have gone and grown well beyond that. And budgets really now, for most organizations, budgets and plans, are the roadmap or the means to achieve your organization's strategic goals. We have goals set up at the year. Here are the resources we have available to complete those goals. And our budget and our plan is a roadmap to use those resources to meet those goals. Okay. So they're extremely important. So 
So Active Winter saw that. We saw that, or Sage saw that, that we have, you know, every organization out there is budgeting, that most of those budget processes, you know, out there are, are formal and, and important to organizations' health, and that budgets are extremely now, you know, and more and more highly important to each and every organization. And people have seen that more and more even in the last few years, I think, uh, with the challenges in the economy of how important budgets can be. So you might say, well, okay, <clears throat> that makes sense. But if what I'm saying is true and everybody's budget's unique, well, how do you how do you go about automating a process, or well, how do you design a product to, to assist with budgets if everybody's got a unique uh, uh, need and system out there? Well, because there is commonality, and the commonality is not you know in your you know in your budgets or how the budget's designed. The commonality is in the challenges. What we've seen is everybody has a need to automate that budget process they have, because basically most budget processes take too long. According to CFO Magazine, the average process is, is four to five months. That's a long time. Maybe you're more efficient than that in your organization. Maybe you, you take one to two months. It's still a long time, uh, especially in this a day and age where things are changing rapidly. Uh, to put, take that long to put a budget together or plan together means by the time you're done with it, um, you know, the, the picture that you've built it on has changed uh, dramatically already. So we need to streamline the process. The other part we need to streamline it for is because we really probably ought to be budgeting more often nowadays than just you know one budget a year. So we need a process that's more efficient so we can maybe update it quarterly, things like that. Folks are dealing another challenge. We see folks dealing with inaccurate numbers. You get to the end of this process, you put a lot of time into it, but then nobody really pays attention to the budget or the plan you put together because nobody has faith in the numbers that are created. Well, that's not only a waste in time, but it's not helping you accomplish those strategic goals. Process is expensive. Think about your budget. You know, uh, if you're taking uh, two or three months to put a budget process together, you know that's a lot of time that's invested in that. And whose time's invested? Well, your management level onto your up to your CFO in a lot of cases. So these are some of your better compensated people in your organization that are spending time on this process. So it's a very expensive process to put the budget together the way you're putting it together now. If we can streamline that process, if we can shorten that process, then we can save a significant amount of time in that process. There's also a difficulty we see in a lot of organizations in collaborating. How do we get input from folks across the organization? The majority of people we talk to are coming to look at Active Planner are doing their budgets currently on Excel. And Excel is a great tool, but it really was not created for budgeting. So maybe you're trying right now to get input from people by by emailing out sheets and get you know having folks complete some information and sending it back and it's really not a great way to collaborate. So we saw folks have a need to uh, to have a better tool for collaborating and getting that input. And you need to feed relevance back to people. If folks are going to be providing data into the budget, we need to show them the relevance of that data so they provide us the best data possible. If they have no idea what happens to the data once they provide it. Um, then they have no vested interest in providing the best data they can. So we saw all these challenges, and that's what Sage looked at and said, okay, we need to create a budgeting tool. Uh, we need to create a good budgeting tool, and this is where Active Planner came from. So what is Active Planner? Active Planner is an enterprise-wide purpose-built planning and analysis application. What does that mean? It means it was designed to give control of the budgeting structure and methodology directly to the budget manager while at the same time making it easy to get others involved from across your organization. And it does that by doing the things you see listed here on the screen. So what specifically, how specifically can it help? What specifically does Active Planner do to help streamline our processes? Well, first and foremost, we have a set of, set of integration into your general ledger. Basically, what happens with Active Planner is Active Planner can actually integrate with all your GL data via ODBC, via Open Database Connectivity. So rather than you rekeying data out of your GL into Active Planner, or even uploading and downloading it into, uh, into Active Planner directly or things like that, we can actually create that ODBC link to your GL data. What that means is there's no need to import your chart of accounts, your fiscal periods, um, or your uh, balances into Active Planner. All that information is going to be automatically available to you within the product itself. That also means that if you go along and you add a new account number to your general ledger, that we can actually have that same account number automatically updated inside your budget environment whenever you tell it to do so. 
So you don't have to add data into two places. You can add a new GL account number, and you can be sure that you're going to have that new account number now show up within your budget environment as well. It means there's no need to define your fiscal periods. Whatever you have set up in your GL, that's what we're going to have set up in Active Planner. So daily, weekly, 13 periods, 445, how whatever you might use. And it means there's no need to import your actual budget and statistical balances. That all that information is going to be automatically available to you right with an active planner. And finally, when you're done with your budget, you can export your budget values right back to your general ledger uh, at the end of the budget cycle if you want to have your budgets and your actuals live next to each other right back in your, your, your general ledger. Going beyond that, though, because that's all general ledger, and that make that streamlines our process right there. If we've got better access to our general ledger information, but we go beyond that because Active Planner also delivers that same integration to all your other enterprise data as well. You can link to all the other data that you have on your system via ODBC as well. Because remember, our goal is to eliminate rekeying and uploading, downloading data. So. Whether you have information in Abra, FAS, Sales Logics, Timesheets Pro, to name some Sage products, but really any OLADB compliant data source or ODBC compliant data source, such as Excel or Access, third-party software, other payroll software, things such as that, we can link to those data sources and bring that data into Active Planner into all the appropriate places automatically for you. So again, our goal is if you have data on your system that you need within your budget or your plan, that we link to that data and we bring that data together for you. And that's one of the big things Active Planner can do for you. I do want to mention once you have your budgets created in Active Planner, we do have an analyzer tool. It's an often forgotten part about budgeting. You know, if a budget is a means to achieve your strategic goal, once you put your budget together, you really ought to do some analysis to see if it's going to be effective for you. Um, because you know, it's not, then, we, then you need to, uh, to reevaluate and such. Well, with Active Planner, what we can do is we save time in your budget process, so you'll have time for analysis, because that's the most number one reason folks do, don't do analysis. Um, but we also provide you a tool where you can put your data in OLAP cubes and view your data uh, you know, three-dimensionally or visually or graphically as opposed to just looking at numbers on a page. The real key to Active Planner, as I mentioned earlier, is that it's a flexible planning solution. Really what Active Planner is going to bring to you is flexibility and control. I mean, if I had to call it down into two things, that's, uh, that's what it brings to the table. So we provide you with that flexibility by providing you a lot of the things that you see here listed on the screen. I'm not going to go into these individually because we'll probably talk about these as we look at the product itself. I will mention the last one, though, however. Because one of the nice things Active Planner does is provides access into the budget environment via the web, via browsers, so that if you need to get input from folks across your organization, they can simply go to their web browser, dial into the appropriate part of the budget, and enter in that information that you might need. This means you don't have any software to load on their system, nothing to update. They've got whatever they need to participate in the budget process. You've got total control of what they see, what they have access to, uh, but they can, again, dial in and give you the, the immediate feedback you need to continue the budget process on its way. And I'll show you that web view tool as we, we look at part of the demo. Before we jump over and look at the software itself, just keep in mind where we're coming from and where we're going to. As I said, most people are on Excel, so just to give you an idea of what the process looks like now is to to where the process would be with Active Planner. Keep in mind, if you have a current Excel process, right now your data is decentralized. You have a great deal of uploading and downloading. You've got an extreme amount, usually, of rekeying to get all your data into your budget environment. Um, you have to restructure that data once you get it all in there, because you can't maintain the structure and automatically put all your data into appropriate places uh, each and every time. And you've got no real good way to, to update your, your budget with current information. If, if once you set your budget up, uh, your base information changes, you either have to rekey in the uh, changed information or you have to upload, download that data again and reformat that all over again to, to put it back into things. So real decentralized data you know, um, structure, uh, which can create a lot of time uh, and effort on the front end of putting your budget together each and every time. 
you also have very little control. I mean, once you bring all that data together in Excel and you assemble this great budget, you build this budget with all these sheets and things that you have to put together, what's the first thing you need to do? Well, you tear that budget up into little pieces and you send it out to everybody throughout your organization. You build a budget, and then the first thing you, you have to do because of the limitations in Excel is you have to destroy that budget, tear it apart, send it out to everybody throughout your organization, whereupon you lose control. You know, now that those pieces you sent out may or may not come back looking the same as they did when you sent them out. Folks have a lot of familiarity with Excel. You have little control, so they might change structure, might change columns, might change other information. You don't want them to change. So when you get the information back, it's now suspect and you have uh, you know, trouble reassembling. And that's what you do next. You get the information back, and in essence, now you have to rebuild your budget a second time. Once you rebuild the budget, put all that information back in there and back together, now you have to manually consolidate your budget and your numbers up throughout the budget process to all the uppermost levels. Hopefully that sounds familiar to the way you're doing your budget process now. Now just to give you an idea, we go with the Sage Active Planner, the process would look a lot different. We're going to have an ongoing data level link to all your data sources. That means there's not going to be any rekeying of data. That means it's easy to refresh information. If your source data changes, we can actually refresh the calculations in the data with an active planner. It means we build your budget once, and we use that same structure, budget after budget, time after time, and we can actually just bring the data into all the appropriate places in the, inside that budget automatically. Also means, because it's much more automated, you can use additional information in your budget that you may not have used before because it was too time consuming. Now, once you build this great budget and active planner, you decide you need input from everybody across your organization, your budget stays intact. You actually invite folks to dial in to the appropriate places in the budget uh, and enter in the information you need. And again, you have total control of who sees what information, who's allowed to change what information. So that you have very tight control over that. Folks dial into the budget again. They enter in that information as soon as they enter it you now have access to that information. You don't have to wait for them to send it back. Also, because you've maintained structure, maintained control, all your consolidations now are automated. So once you have your data in, you can flow that data up your plan, take your uh, totals, bring that up into maybe a summary data sheet, take that summary data sheet numbers, bring that up into a higher level, and so on and so forth, all in an automated fashion. Very different type of budget process than the budget process you might have now with Excel. Just want to give you that picture uh, before we go over into look at the product. So let's go over and look at Active Planner now. And this is just some feedback from some clients that we've had on Active Planner. But we're going to go ahead and look at the application itself. Two things to keep in mind when we do that. One is something we've already talked about. Active Planner is extremely flexible. So as we go into here, I'm going to show you examples of some sheets, some things we might do with an Active Planner. Okay. Uh, but those, that's all they are is examples. Everything I show you can be customized to meet your needs. So if I show you an expense side sheet that's not how you do expenses, that's okay. We can change the columns and the data we include in those columns. We can change what we're budgeting based on. We can change the time periods in there. It's all customizable with an active planner and the built-in features. Two, keep in mind that as we go on, I'm going to start in the back end. So I'm going to show you tools that are only touched initially when we're helping set the budget up and only touched maybe by the consultants that are going to help you set your budget up. So we're going to start in that back end with those tools, and those are important so you can see how we do what we do. So it's not just me telling you Active Planner can do things. You'll get to see how it happens by looking at those tools. So that's why we start there with that, that back end. Once we see those, then we'll back out and I'll show you how as a budget team or budget manager, um, you can leverage those tools to make things easy, as easy as possible on an ongoing basis. And then finally, we'll take the last step back and we'll show you how we make things as simple as possible for your department heads and, and automate their interaction with the budget and show you that web-based tool uh, for them to, have, to be able to dial in using and, and participate with. Okay, well, let's go ahead and look at, take a look at Active Planner. Okay, this is Active Planner. It is an Outlook type of an interface. So in essence, what that means is our screen is divided into three panes. 
Our left-hand pane here is our shortcuts pane. These are user-defined shortcuts, so each person that accesses the product this way can create shortcuts for areas they go to most often so that they can access them with a single click. Our middle pane is our folders pane, and when we select an item from the middle pane, we're going to see details about that item on the right-hand side. If nothing selected, we see kind of a Sage standard desktop, kind of like we're looking at right now. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and select the plan. And as I do that, um, please keep in mind here that I've got multiple plans that I can choose from here that you might see here within the demonstration environment. And that's one of the nice things about Active Planner is you can have as many plans going at any one time as you would like. So I can keep history out there. I can have best case scenarios, worst case scenarios, multiple plans for different entities. Uh, there's not really a limit to the number of different plans we can have going here. All right, so I'm going to select the plan. And as I open that plan, the area that opens up here on the right is an area we call Plan Manager. And Plan Manager is great. It's the control center of Active Planner for the budget team. And it's here where you get a great overall picture of the entire budget, how it looks and how, it, how it's laid out. And it's a picture you can't get right now if you're using Excel. Because in Excel, you probably have a, a workbook with a bunch of tabs across the bottom that shows you what's in your budget but doesn't show you how everything fits together. With this, uh, with this plan manager view, you most certainly do get to see your overall budget, all the sheets, and how they work together. And the picture we provide you is in the form of a hierarchical tree. And you get to create that hierarchical tree structure simply by dragging and dropping all the individual sheets that make up your plan, and we call those sheets plan sheets, into the appropriate position on the tree. So let's look at this plan as an example. That might be an easy way to understand what I'm saying here. If we look at this plan here, you can see this, this company or organization budgets in such functional areas as product summaries, product sales, and department summaries. Underneath department summaries, they budget departmentally. Sales, marketing, design, facilities, IT, admin. Underneath sales, maybe they budget geographically. Corporate, North America, South America, Europe, Asia, and so on. Maybe underneath these sales sheets, they want to budget below the line item level. They want to go in much more detail for some of the, the GL account level items as far as the way they budget. So maybe underneath these sheets, they have some compensation level sheets where they're going to budget for compensation on a much more detailed level. Hopefully you can see that we can go down as many levels as we need to to accurately reflect, reflect the way you're doing budgeting within your organization. And maybe you can also see that from this, we also get a really good idea of data flow so that we know that values entered down here on these compensation level sheets are most likely going to consolidate and flow up into the Sales North America sheet. That that might join together with the data and all these other sheets here and flow up and consolidate into this Department 100 sales sheet. So we see our overall numbers in that sheet. And that might flow up and you know join together with these other department level sheets and so on and so forth. So we get a lot of information just from this view right here. Not only all the parts that make up our plan, but how all those parts work together to flow data up our plan. Okay. All right. So that shows us how we get some great overall information as a budget team. Let's go ahead and take a look at a plan sheet to see what feeds the information into that. So here's a pretty typical type of plan sheet with an active planner on an, on an expense side, OK? The first thing you might notice is it does look a little similar to Excel. We've got support for all your standard formatting options, rows and columns, rotated text, colors, font styles. All that fun stuff you have in Excel, you still have right here in Active Planner, even down to and including cell formulas. Now, we've included all that on purpose because this is not an Excel-based tool. This is a built-from-the-ground-up budgeting tool uh, that we, again, on purpose included some of those Excel-type look and feel. Why, you might ask? Well, for two reasons. One, to give you some familiarity. If things look and feel familiar to you, well, then that's going to lessen your learning curve. Not only that, it's going to help people throughout your organization adopt this product that much more quickly. And that's important when we're dealing with people across the organization. Two, we give you those Excel type capabilities to give you some insur assurance that if there's something you're doing right now in Excel, at the very least, we can recreate that using tools you're already familiar with. 
So that's it. That's where the similarity with Excel ends. Because again, this is not Excel. This is a built from the ground up budgeting tool. So let's take a look at Active Planner here and um, see what makes it unique, some of the unique tools within here. And we're going to start here with the different rows. And with Active Planner, our rows can contain, you know, we can budget based on GL account information or other data sources. And remember, that's important, that I can budget based on non-GL data if I want to. And I'll show you sheets in a little bit where we do that. In this particular uh, sheet here, we are budgeting based on GL account information. And you can see that even though I only have a relatively small number of account numbers in this particular sheet, I double click on this column, on a, on a row within this column, you can see that all of our account numbers are available to me because of the way we link to that GL account information. So if you wanted to add a new account number to this sheet, it would be very easy to do so. You can come over here, double click, link to all that new account information, uh, you know, the GL accounts, look up the account number that you want and put that account number in here very easily. But you shouldn't even have to do that much on an ongoing basis. Right? Because with Active Planner, we help you keep your budget up to date. But we also include something called sections. And what sections are, is there are different groups of data that we want to include in the plan sheet. And we get to designate those different groups and title them. So maybe we're going to have a salary section because we're going to have some salary data. An expense section because we're going to have some expense data. And once we title those different sections, then we get to designate the range or group or groups of account numbers that we want to have present in those particular sections. By doing it that way, it not only helps our sheet, us create the sheet you know, to begin with, because we create those, those, that little range of account numbers, and it'll bring in those account numbers that fall within that range for us automatically, but it helps keep this sheet up to date, because if you add a new account number, down the road, and it falls within that range or group you've defined for this section on the sheet, well, this section will know that that new account number belongs in there and can automatically add that new account number to the appropriate place within this sheet whenever you tell it to do so. So think about right now, if you add a new account number, what you have to do is manually go back, open up different uh, Excel spreadsheets, look in them, see where the, you know, if the new account number belongs in each one, if it does, figure out where it does belong in there, then make space for it, go in, manually put the new account number in, uh, see if it belongs anywhere else, close the sheet, go out, repeat the whole process over and over again. That can happen for you all automatically with an Active Planner just as a result of this one tool. This, this section tool can be an immense time saver on an ongoing basis, depending on how many account numbers you add throughout the year. Okay. Okay, we do also, with an Active Planner, a full notation capability. So I can put notes in on a row level. These notes are date, timed, and user stamped. They're unlimited in nature. So I can put instructions or information in. And when I have notes on a row, for a particular row, then that, that note column is bolded for that particular row. I can also put notes in on a cell level. Same thing, date, time, user stamped, unlimited in nature. I have a lot of notation capability here. Okay, that brings us to probably the main reason for sitting here today, which is data. I mean, data is the most important part about your budget. It's probably what takes you the longest amount of time to populate when you, you know, you're doing your budget right now. And it's really where Active Planner can have the biggest impact and provide the biggest assistance in automating your budget. Because Active Planner can automate almost all of the data population throughout your budget. So now before I show you what we do uniquely, know that we can do everything you can do now. So you know you can manually type in numbers. You can copy a number across a number of columns using a fill option. You can use cell formulas to populate values and we have in many instances and here's an example of that. Those are all manual methods, and again, those are all methods you have available to you now. The real power of Active Planner when it comes to automatic, uh, automating your data population comes from utilizing our calculation engine. 
let's take a look at this calculation engine. So I open up this calculation engine. And again, this calculation engine here is about as deep in the product as we're going to get. So as I open up the calculation engine, I'm going to point some rows here on the upper left out. These rows correspond to the different types of columns we have in our plan sheet. So I have a budget row, because I have budget columns in our sheet here. I have a prior actual row, because I have prior actual columns. I have year-to-date total rows, because I have year-to-date total columns. And the calculation engine I just opened up is designed to apply one calculation per column group per row in our plan sheet. So we can be very specific in terms of the calculations we apply. We have three different types of calculations. <coughs> Excuse me. The first is an amount calculation. With the amount calculation, I simply type in a dollar amount. I'm going to type in 12,000. And I can select the columns from this budget column group that I want to apply that $12,000 to from this little window over here on the right-hand side. So if I want to apply the $12,000 to all budget columns, all 12 budget columns, I can, I can leave them all selected. If I want to budget differently for the first three months than the, the remainder of the year, then I can do that too. Once I decide the columns that I want to apply that dollar amount to, <clears throat> then I get to decide if I want to take that 12000 and apply it to each column individually. So do I want to put a value of 12000 in each and every column? Or do I want to take that 12000 I typed in and spread it out across my entire group of columns? And if I want to spread it out across the entire group of columns, then I get to decide if I want to spread it evenly. So in this case, I have 12,000 in 12 columns, so I'm asking, do I want to put $1,000 in each column? Or more powerfully, do I want to spread that dollars out via the use of ratios? And if I want to spread the $12,000 out across my entire group of columns via the use of ratios, I can base those ratios on last year's actuals. So for example, if I'm dealing with the office supply row here, and last year we front-loaded our office supply expenses, so 50% of them happened in the month of January, well then 6,000, that 12,000 I just typed in is going to automatically go in the month of January, and the other 6,000 is going to get spread out across the other 11 months based on the percent of office supply expenses they represented last year. And we can use actual budget or statistical values to create those ratios. I can even use plan sheet values, which means I can create my own custom ratios if I want to as well. And I go back up to 10 years prior to, to get those numbers. So a great way to automate a fairly common type of methodology we use in budgeting and to spread the dollars out across the months they're most likely to be spent. Now, our second calculation method automates an even more standard type of methodology we might use in budgeting. It's called source net change, and it says, well, instead of typing in a dollar value, why don't we just go ahead and look at our GL, since we're linked to it and we've got that, that information there. Instead of us you know, typing in anything, why don't we go ahead and populate the budget columns for our office supply row with last year's actuals? What do we actually spend each month on office supplies last year? And then let me adjust those numbers by a dollar amount or a percentage. So if we've been told that we're to reduce our office supply expenditures this year by 7%, bring in what we actually spent each month last year on office supplies and go ahead and reduce those numbers by 7%. Very common methodology used in, uh, in budgeting now, and we've got a very easy way to automate that. It also shows you how easy it is to populate prior actual columns. We just go, go ahead and tell it to prior populate the columns with last year's actuals. <coughs> so those first two methods automate a good bulk of our you know, standard methodologies we use in budgeting. So hopefully you're looking at that thinking, wow, that's great. You know, those are that can really assist your organization, that can save you a lot of time. But maybe you're also thinking, but what about everything else? What about the non-standard stuff we do? I mean, that's some of the most time-consuming stuff we have. You know, what if you need to take a number from an Excel spreadsheet and combine that with a value from your general ledger? 
or what if you want to have a you know a column where your department heads enter in some numbers and you need to take those numbers and apply them across different GL accounts or you need to take data values from three different data sources and bring them all together you know how do you automate all that stuff you do all of that with our third calculation methodology our formula engine and formula is again this is the, the last piece of this before we start to really to show you how we leverage the power so bear with me through the formulas but formulas are mathematical equations that are going to allow us to bring together values from different sources and different periods of time into a single mathematical equation they're going to allow us to automate the calculation of just about everything else let's take a quick look at this formula engine again I'm going to create an equation within this formula engine and the formula engine provides me with a variety of ways I can introduce data into this equation I'm creating first and foremost I can bring in account values and I can specify the time period I want to bring those account values in from I can specify the company so if I want to bring values across companies I can do that the balance type are the actual budget or statistical values and the account or range of accounts that I want to bring values in from and I can even use masking if I want to make that part of my equation as well once I decide the values I want on the first line of my equation I simply join those to the next line of my equation with any standard operand add subtract multiply or divide As my equation progresses I can use parentheses to control the order of processing Now I can also introduce values in this equation I'm creating via the use of constants. So I can type in a number to represent interest rate or inflation or things like that. In fact, one common use of just these first two data types is I've had folks that say, well, look, we don't budget off of last year's account values. We budget off of an average of our last three years' account values. Can we do that? The answer is, of course we can go in bring in your last year's account values prior one prior two prior three you add them all together if we divide by a constant of three maybe we even multiply that by a constant of 1.1 and we've just created an equation to bring in the average of our last three years account values and increase it by 10 percent so hopefully you can start to see what we can do within this formula engine. But the power goes well beyond what we've already seen here because we can also introduce data into these formulas we're creating via the use of database and linked server queries. This means I can go out to any open source database on the system. Any ODBC compliant or OLED compliant database that's on your system grab the data we might need and bring that data back that means you know you know things such as Excel or access other sage products non sage products where again ever you have data house you need to use within this formula or equation we can go grab that data bring that data back not only that but I can limit the data I'm bringing back with standard SQL queries which means I can do if then scenarios on that data as well we can make that data we bring back conditional and then finally I can introduce values in this equation I'm creating by grabbing them from other locations with an active planner So now if you want to have that column where your, de your department heads give a number that you want to pull into a formula to calculate something else you can do that if you want to have global assumptions where you establish numbers on the uppermost level of your plan and you pull them into all the individual department level sheets you can do that as well Hopefully you can see the power of what can happen here in this formula engine. These formulas can be single lines where we go grab a value from Excel spreadsheet so they can be very simple or they can be multiple lines. It really depends on the needs of your budget. The nice thing, the other nice thing about these formulas though is once we create them, we save them. So now we can use them over and over again throughout the budget. Remember I told you we're in the back end. This is stuff where we're going to help you set up is all these formulas. We'll set them all up initially so that you have them, and now you can use them over and over again throughout your budget. The great part about that is 
let's say now you've used this formula for something and the way you want to calculate this changes. Well, now you can open up this formula and make that change. Now, everywhere you've used this formula throughout your budget is now updated. You don't have to go back to 50 different Excel spreadsheets, update each and every cell formula individually. You can update one place and have it updated throughout your plan. <coughs> okay, hopefully you understand the power of what we just saw there in the calculation engine and how that's really going to be key to automating your budget. So now let's take that step back and see how we leverage this and make things very easy as a budget manager to run your budget now. So we're looking at our budget. Let's say this is we're all part of one team and this is our budget and we're all pretty happy with it. And now it's time to start a new budget cycle. The question is, what do we need to do? How do we do that? Do we start from scratch kind of like we do with Excel every time? Do we need to go update all those formulas individually? You know, how do we move the budget forward? And the answer is very easily. And it's hidden over here on this main tab. We've been in this plan sheet area, but there's a little main tab up in this corner. And then in the main tab, there's something called base date. And the power of the base date is really simple but very important to us. So all of our columns and all of our group dates are linked to that base date. In addition, all those formulas we just created and the calculations we just created that are linked to our ERP systems or general ledger data systems, they're linked to that base date as well. Remember, I never entered a date into those formulas and everything. I was putting prior one, prior two, prior three, prior period one, things like that. So what tells the formulas what the current date is they're basing everything off of? The base date does. So when you want to update your budget or move your budget forward, all you need to do is change that base date and you can pick your entire budget up and move it forward. You want a budget for 2012, you change that base date to 2012. Your budget columns will change automatically to read 2012 dates. Your prior actuals will change to read 2011. They will populate with 2011 data because of the formulas we have in there. Maybe your uh, 2012 columns have things based on last year. As they said, take last year's plus 10%. Well, now we'll take 2011 data plus 10%. So Active Planner will populate every piece of data that it possibly can. The only thing you'll need to do to complete your new budget is to get any user inputted data that's required. This is how with Active Planner now becomes practical to move your budget to a rolling forecast, you know, move it forward monthly, or update your budget quarterly or semi-annually because again, it's so easy to move your budget forward and your data, you know, again, you almost have a fully populated budget from the get-go. All right, different scenario. Let's say we look at our budget, we like it, we show it to somebody and we say, hey, you know, what do you think of the budget? And they say, well, it's great, but what if we uh, sold more over here? What if uh, this cost us more than you've got here? So folks want to do what if scenarios. That's fine. That's kind of nice. The, the great thing about Active Planner, one another great thing about Active Planner is every time you make changes to a sheet like this, you have the option to save it as a new revision. And that's done on this main tab as well right here. I'm going to call this revision three because we did make some changes while we've been talking. And now that I have a new revision, I have the option to compare it to other revisions to see what's changed. So I'll open up my revision comparison tool that shows me all my other revisions. I've only got a couple, but I could have a whole bunch. And I say, well, I'm going to compare revision three that we just created to revision two, which was the one we started with. So it's going to open up for me now in my revision comparison tool revision three. But what it's going to do is it's going to highlight for me in yellow everything that changed from one revision to the other. So if you remember, this, you know, I typed manually typed in this number when I said we can manually enter numbers here. It obviously affected other numbers I may or may not have been aware of, but now I most certainly am. I don't remember what the number was before. I just hover my mouse over here. 20, it was 22,222. It's now 35,000. The number was 99,774, it's now 112,552. A great way to try what-if scenarios, see if you like what happened, what, you know, the changes they make. It's also a great way to keep track of uh, users. If you want to have folks uh, and make some, enter some numbers for you and we want to keep track of what numbers they change, you give them their own revision. That way when you get it back, you can compare it to the revision you sent them and see what they changed. Really neat tool. Um, 
did want to mention security. We do have security here. Remember, we can very tightly control who sees what information, who has access to what information. So, you know, we can go in here. We set up users. They're passworded, things such as that. We decide what permissions users have when we set them up. When we come into different sheets and different plans, we can say, hey, Bill has no access to this particular uh, sheet. Or Bob is a reviewer, so he can look but not touch. Or Denise is a planner, so she can make changes. But even if we let her be a planner, we can control down to a cell level, which she can and cannot change. So very tight security can very tightly control who sees what information, who has access to what information. All right, let's take a quick look at a different type of sheet, just so you can see how we deal with different types of data, because we've been looking at GL data in that one particular sheet here. Let's open up this sheet here. This sheet is now very different than what we were looking at before because we're no longer budgeting based on GL account data. And this is one of those flexibility things I told you on Active Planner is we can budget based on any type of data that you want. So here we're budgeting based on employees and they're indicated by ID numbers that indicate their department and location. With Active Planner you can budget based on any piece of information you want. You just simply go into this folder here and you tell it I want to budget based on employees or job or location. Once you tell it that that's something you want to base budget base on, all you have to do is point it to the data. Where is the data table? Let Active Planner know where to find it. And once you do that, you can let it know what type of data you want out of that data table. Employee ID number, name, hire date, salary, salary range. And once that's set up, you can use it over and over again throughout your budget. Not only that, but we can treat that data now just like we treat our GL data. So for this particular sheet, I can create a section that says bring in all the employees that exist in Department 100 and Location 100. So if I add a new employee to the payroll database, I will automatically, that new employee can automatically be added here as well. Can you budget for existing uh, SKUs and anticipated new SKUs, somebody asked on? Yes, of course you can. You can um, budget on existing SKUs the same way as I just showed on employees here. Anticipated ones would be the same way as we might deal with anticipated employees. So if I scroll down here and say, well, we want to add, you know, we want to budget for employees that might not exist yet because we're going to hire new employees this year, we have down here we can type in and have an area where we can enter in the information we need for new hires. Again, remember these sheets can be configured any way you want. We can house any of the type of information you want. Okay, last thing I want to show you, because I know we're running low on time here, is I do want to show you um, the web-based access. So this is, we've seen now the back end. You've seen how we've got a lot of tools to make things as easy as possible for the budget team. Now I want to show you how we can make things hopefully as simple as we can for everybody else, the department heads, the folks that just need to, to get in, enter some data, and uh, uh, maybe view some information. And remember, they can do this via the web, via their browser. They simply browse to the appropriate site on the internet or the intranet. They would enter in their username and password, and I'm going in now as a uh, department head named Sam. And so this web-based access is going to provide them access into the software. Uh, the biggest difference here, though, is remember with the web, these web access or the web licenses are limited, meaning that folks with a web access can't make structural changes to our plans. People going in this way can only enter data and view information, but that's okay for our department heads. It's really all they need to do. Well, Sam logs in here, and since he's head of one department, he's looking in the same plan we were just looking at that's got hundreds upon hundreds of plan sheets in it, but he doesn't need to see hundreds upon hundreds of sheets. He just needs to see the sheets that apply to him. So indeed, that's all Sam sees of the three sheets that apply to him in his job. Knowing that, he clicks on the first sheet because he knows he needs to participate in the budget process, up opens the sheet for Sam. And most importantly, it's in a very simple format that Sam can understand. There's rows and columns. We should have very little training to do with Sam. We can provide instructions if we want. So for example, enter values in blue fields like we've done here. We've colored fields blue. We, we can go the extra mile. So if Sam doesn't read those instructions and click somewhere we don't want him to click, he can't. I'm trying to click wherever I stop my mouse. We've locked Sam out of all the other fields except for the fields we want him in. So try as he might to change the data we don't want him to change, he can't do it. 
once he clicks on a blue field, lo and behold, he can enter data and provide us the information we want. And he can go down and, and do all, all of that. We can structure this data interaction whichever way we need. And again, we can have it more free form, so he can type in, you know, if we've got new hires that he's planning for his department, we can have them enter in monthly numbers for us if we need to. Uh, you can see here we've got numbers we brought down from a global assumption sheet, um, where up above somebody said, hey, this is what we're going to be doing, and so on and so forth. Keep in mind, once we get all your data in Active Planner and we gather that data from Sam, as soon as he's done and quits out of this, we have access to that data. And we can now flow that data up throughout our plan. We can then automatically consolidate that data so we can go up a level and look at department summary sheets and see the, the data on a department level. We can go, actually, we can see a summary sheet for all our different departments and see all the data there. We can go up and down and do different things. <laughs> so that's basically the keys to Active Planner or some of the main things I wanted to show you about it. There's a lot more the product can do, but hopefully you're getting a very good idea of how it can automate a lot of the manual tasks and repetitive tasks that you do now. Keep in mind when you're done with your budget, we can put the values again back into your GL if you want. Active Planner publishes them to can publish to, uh, SQL data tables so you can report straight out of Active Planner if you want. Or you could even build you know, sheets with an active planner to eliminate your needs for reports. So again, like that summary sheet we saw or this product sales sheet, things such as that, we might be able to eliminate your need for certain reports just by building sheets with an active planner so that and they would serve as your reports. 